It's noon, and we have a quorum. Um, and so it looks to me, other than discussing the commissioner's meeting itself agenda, there are three items associated with the work session. One would be the liquid fuels allocation, the second is bid on some vehicles, and then the third is a feasibility study. And given the fact that we have a guest to talk about the feasibility study, yeah. um, could we go ahead and Actually, that? I was going to say, why not you do the other two, because those won't take long. Like, I have to get this presentation. Oh, you're going to run OK. Very good. All right. Liquid fuels, we'll start with that. I didn't realize you were doing a presentation. Yeah. Um, so in your packets, Pam has put a number of liquid fuel uh, allocation options. Um, it looks like there's four of them to be distributed based on what we're estimating uh, for 2023. The first one is if we were to distribute 115,000, then that would leave us 32,795. Uh, left in our checking account. The second would be 125,000, which would leave 22,795 uh, in our checking account. The third would be distributing 130,000, which would leave 17,795 in our checking account. And then the fourth would be 135,000, um, leaving 12,795 dollars in our checking account. So, Pam, do you have any thoughts or comments on what you would choose as a recommendation and why? Because of what happened with COVID and we were short on what we were given, I would go with 30,000 leaving the 17, and that way if there is another uptick and nobody's traveling, it gives us a little bit of cushion. Okay because then we can make up that shortfall the next year with what's left. Yes. In the fund. Okay. Very good. Any other comments or discussion from anybody about that? No? And then I'll have that on the agenda in a resolution for Wednesday. Okay. And then secondly <clears throat> would be, we, we did have a number of bids for uh, two Ford Explorers. Um, it looks like we asked the bid start prices to be a thousand dollars each. Um, there was a 2014 Explorer, a 2013 Explorer. <laughs> the 2014 Explorer has a front fender damage, and the 2013 has the passenger door panel missing. The passenger door panel's missing. This used to be the old canine vehicle, so they take those off, and we cannot locate them. But it did give us a, uh, still gave us a $4,000 bid. Okay. So there are a number of bids here. My only question is, um, it was brought to my attention this morning that, you know, for the future, there is a box when we put them online to, we don't extend the auction. These two bids were 527 and 533 I didn't mark that box, so somebody bid, it extended it three minutes. Somebody bids, it extends it another three minutes. Our bid was advertised to end at five o'clock. So we can either reject these and go back out to start, or go ahead and accept these, and then in the future, I know to mark that box so that it stops at five o'clock and it doesn't keep extending it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's I, pretty common. Yeah. I don't see why that is a problem. I don't, I don't think that would be a problem. I would just say, like, in the future, when you advertise it, not have, like, an end time, per se. Like, if they're doing electronic, you know, that it starts at a given time and it ends when nobody bids anymore. You, know? you still have to give it an end date or an end time so that yeah, it, stop. it stops so, if nobody bids. And that's, and that's what you could just add that as well, a caveat. Right. Yeah. I, I get that you would set a time so that it ends if nobody bids, but I, you know, for, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we'll have that also on Wednesday. <clears throat> the sold amounts for the 2014 Explorer, $4,650, and for the 2013 
2013 is for $4,050. Um, as far as the, I'm just going to skip over to the commissioner's meeting because are you still? Yeah, my laptop had to have updates, so now it's, it's <laughs> updating. So. <laughs> meeting agenda just for a minute and while we're waiting for the laptop to update so we've got proclamations of bleeding disorder awareness month american red cross month and gambling awareness month and then um, new business just moving down to that um, we will have recommendation for appointments to the conservation district board of directors and then I did get also, uh, there's a couple of repository tax bids. Okay, a lot of repository tax bids. And that's about it. <laughs> and then a couple resolutions, and a resolution for some more um, policy and procedures. Yes. Which is the vehicle maintenance policy. And And another one. Was that that? <laughs> and another one. Oh, well, yeah, and another one. We also have the, the election, election related procedure, but that is to go for election board, I guess. Well, that, and we're waiting on info, input from Nathaniel. Oh, well, that's right. We'll push that oh. off a couple more weeks. Okay. What, what is that second? <laughs> Was that the one for the coroner? I don't know. The coroner passed that on her own. Because you had a couple of edits. Yeah. Well, goodness, I can't remember. I guess I'll send an email out about it. Did you had it in the email, mm -hmm. didn't you? Okay. And I don't have the contents of that in front of me. Yeah. <clears throat> but the important one is the vehicle maintenance policy so that we can start and get rid of the $6 fleet charge. Okay. Enterprise. Right. Keep track of our own maintenance. Okay. We'll, we feel more prepared for that. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we should just get started because God knows when this is going to work. <laughs> Sorry, Shane. Yeah. I'm curious okay. if, no if I can get it up to run on that well, but it's just like. Uh, is it the same uh, proposal that we have in, in writing? Or is it yeah, yeah. They, they had submitted it, uh, or we had circulated it a couple times but last week. So um, we wanted to schedule a meeting with uh, Larson in order to have a discussion with the commissioners generally about the renovation project, where it stands, and, and um, what we need to do to move forward. All right, sounds great. <clears throat> so, hand it over to Shane to discuss. Yes, so I thought we could. Well, this has been updated to this last one. Okay. So, but it's the same same one that I uh, sent you to. Electronically. Mm -hmm. There are a few more colorful pictures in there. Uh, from the one previous, yes. Okay. I've, I've been gradually working at this. <clears throat> Things that I've uh, found recently from, we did one, what, five years ago? A feasibility mm -hmm. study about five years ago. So the uh, project had been done with the slate roofing, the flat roof on the 25 edition. And there was some painting of the metal, but it was not entirely done. You can tell that when you walk by the really bright white stuff from the uh, old dingy. So, uh, in here, this first thing is just a letter to Mr. Eggleston. The uh, next one is just a table of contents. So, but then we have also a building code review, which is, you know, just, just saying what the Code would require, which isn't really much. It's more of a 
uh, repairs, and there may be some uh, alteration level one, which is just uh, replacing light for light. Um, next one is just an updated um, little earth map of the building showing the original 1876 courthouse and various additions. We have one in 1925, one in 1980, and one in 2003. So, and along with this, uh, we may get a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Charlie Heer involved. Uh, he is a historical uh, preservation person. Just to make sure what we can or cannot do. Right. When we get into more of the uh, construction drawing portion. Is he local or where? I do not remember where he's out of. Okay. No, he's not that far away. He's still going to come out of town. Pardon? He's still going to come out of town. Yes. So, and beyond that, we have. Basically, a building, building conditions assessment. And some of this has not changed from five years ago. And right now, we're not doing anything with the foundations, flooring, problems, beans, or anything like that. So, there's nothing structural. <laughs> so, we just, it's mainly the building exterior part. And that would be you know, basically your brick repair to out there and see the windows where the uh, wood part is. It's all the paint is peeling and what have you. And I understand that uh, somebody's contacted Aegis about some possibly uh, asbestos testing, mm -hmm. make sure that where it is, where it is. There's is a meeting coming on Wednesday to meet yeah. with um, Wally. Yes, Wally called me this morning. And my main concern for the rest would be the uh, perimeter ceiling around the windows, uh, possibly in the ceiling of the courtroom. It needs to paint. So, those are my two major concerns. See, whoever comes in and does the testing or looks it over will give you an idea of what else may need to be tested. So, uh, with that uh, said, I'll just uh, skip over most of this. We did, have, we did do some things that were not done in the previous project, such as some uh, attic ventilation. There were some things in there. I don't know if it was done in-house or just not done at all. Uh, there were, there's some holes in the attic floor to go through into the various rooms and see if In the safe. attic floor, you say? Yes. Somebody had cut holes in there for access oh. to above the ceiling. Okay. And there's been some some places where there's insulation put in and some's missing, some is just kind of moving around. Okay. So I don't know if anything had been done about that, but uh, some years ago. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, other than that, in the last project, we did the slate roofing, some painting, uh, put a new rubber membrane roof on the 1925 edition. That was done separately from the other project, the slate roof project. Uh, there was also some uh, downspouts put in. Yeah. I don't know exactly how to say it. It's not, they're not very aesthetically pleasing. So you, you'll see that in here. One of the recommendations would be to possibly paint those so they can blend more in with the brick and what have you. Unless you're okay with the white down spots coming in and the brown ones. There's really nothing ever historically correct about it because they used to have the, the old rainwater would come in the gutters and into the building and down into the, what I'm, what I'm thinking it used to be just 
they used to just have a, I mean, one line going down into the sanitary storm, everything's all together. And I'm thinking that they separated it out at one point in time. I, nobody knows exactly what that point in time is. I believe they took this one and went across the parking lot into that drain. Probably. Well, that was part of that. Probably. Last there, year. there were some. They did this way back when, in, uh, in 2018, when they did the rubber roof. They also did the downspouts, which just replaced the ones that were there. So neither of them were historically correct. So. And the main thing would have been uh, what I wanted more of was the uh, photographs toward the back, which would um, be a lot easier to see up there. Yeah. yeah. How's it going? <coughs> would, be, well, would be a lot easier to see up there. <laughs> <laughs> My, this, I don't know what's going on with this laptop. Yeah. They just, they just keep talking chain eventually. I, I don't know. Yeah. But in the photographs, you can see the first couple are just the uh, photograph of the courthouse back in 1877. And that's when it's just a just artist rendition. And uh, you'll go through here and I, you'll see where I'm talking about these urns and rails that used to be there. And that's kind of a uh, wish list thing down the road someplace if you ever want to replace them. Okay. Uh, and I, I was told uh, when Matt was here that he had one stored away, one of the urns. Uh, I don't think I got the exact location of it, but he said he had one stored away. Well, we might know where it's at. So, I'm thinking it might be in your warehouse on the six. Yeah. Are you talking about the urns over here? Up front. Up front? They would have been on the roof. On Fourth Street side. You can see one here. The one roof here. urns. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's one scrolled away somewhere else there. So. What, do, what does the roof burn do? Nothing. Yeah, it's it's just it's just it's just <laughs> That's all. I, so I, there's one over there. I haven't put in a second. There's one in the warehouse? Okay. Um, so. So, so why don't we actually start from the end and then work our way back. So the, the, the proposal has it's separated into pieces. So uh, in order to facilitate grant funding and then also um, just uh, understand like how we can do this um, in pieces if need be. So the first piece is the, the, the painting and renovation of the building, which is the remainder of the feasibility study that we did uh, previously. So everything below the roof line that is essentially in rough shape that needs to be upgraded. So that's one piece of it. Um, um, the, the other part of that is I went back to the previous project and mm -hmm. found out they did not do some painting above. Okay, well, so, I mean, whatever stuff so wasn't done in the first stretch. Okay, um, and then that's the first part of their proposal, and I can't remember what the total cost was for all that renovation, which includes right. like, like brick and masonry and and all the other items. Right. Was it eight hundred? In our opinion, it probably cost right eight hundred and twenty-eight thousand four hundred. Yeah. That does not include uh, architectural engineering fees. Mm -hmm. And I was not sure whether that should go in this one or the one for the. 1980, 2003 editions. Yeah, I'd split them out and, and have them each be their own thing. Right. So uh, I'll have to figure out. I'll have to get with Rick and find out how he wants to split out okay. the fee. If he wants to split out the fee or just put it under one. Yep. Because right now we have it all bunched into one fee. Yep. Okay. So. Um, and so that involves the windows, like all the exterior. Um, you know, uh, cleaning up the brick, fixing masonry, like, and these are areas where there's cracks in the walls that need to be readjusted um, because they're technically structural concerns with the facility. So that piece is, is really important um, that that's we finish. The, that's the majority of the, is that the 
add in there. I wasn't really sure even where that was going to go and and then how your funding works. Yeah, so the, they do, yeah, you'll definitely need to talk to work and have them separated between the two just because you were going to end up doing grants for different for each piece. Okay. That's what There's, I was thinking is how do we separate these? Right. Well, this, we this, this is team. entirely based on, um, you know, stuff like the um, Historical Museum Commission, just because the the age of the building and the stuff that we're doing is, you know, right. renovating the building to look historically accurate. So um, we do a grant application for this. The other stuff in this package, which is the next page, is stuff that's associated with the jail and the back of the building and other things that are not historic. So um, those would be a little bit more challenging to get grant funding for. Okay. Can you pull that up or no? I, I'm trying. I can't. Okay. I, to, I got, well, maybe we can just get an updated one at some point. The, the, yeah, the costs are very similar. Okay. So, <clears throat> that, that's about it on these two buildings, the 1875 edition, that's all this covers. Then the next pending probable cost would be for the 1980 edition, the jail edition, and the 2003 edition, which is the main entrance. Okay. So, not really much on the 2003 edition other than the what's called EFIS or Exterior Installation Fitness System. And when you walk out, out into the uh, parking lot, turn around and look up, you can see where it's all stained. From years of water and dirt and what have you running over it. So that needs to be addressed and can't really find any drawings on it to see what the detail is like that. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have anything like that around. Drawings of the, the, the Yeah, we, we have floor plan, we do not have any uh, details, wall sections details. We, we could look, I mean, there's there's a ton of maps and stuff down in the basement, like in the maintenance uh, room and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, we could sift through that and try to find yeah, something. Is that the stuff you have also in the warehouse? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, 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 it, maybe it was moved mm -hmm. to the warehouse. I mean, if it's the addition, um, there should be stuff because there was stuff there, you know, right. six, seven years ago. Um, and then as far as the jail goes, I'm not 100% sure because there's, there's uh, that's a bit older, and I don't know. I don't know how much we've got on that. Right. Anyhow, he, not, like I said, not too much on the 2003 edition, but on the 1980 edition, mostly on Market Street side. You can see where the uh, brick is cracked, it is, especially by the windows. And once again, the the lintels, which are the steel part that holds the brick masonry everything above, those are rusting and probably should be cleaned and painted just to prevent any more rust. But, uh, uh, and then also on that side where the sheriff's entrance is, you look on both sides, you can see moss and dirt uh, and what have you. Coming down the face of the brick, there's some small brick, and small brick is just really where age just kind of and frost and whatever just to kind of face off the brick. So, and those should be addressed before too much more damage uh, to the brick take place. As I said, the more water gets in there, the more ice builds up, and the worse the problem gets. So, so why don't we, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so why don't we run through, so what's the total uh, for that one? The total for that the second would piece. be, uh, just the construction related would be about 188, 189,000. Mm -hmm. uh, total, including your cost, would be somewhere around 
for the cleanup of the yeah. other parts of the building. Yeah. So um, I think a portion of this we can get grant funding for. The, the this the side, historical yeah. Historical side. Yeah. And then there's another portion that has repairs that is not yeah. historically related, which, and that totals in the upper 150 area, 150,000 ish. For everything else. So okay. it's 850 uh, okay. for this side, like okay. the, the historic building right. up to the jail and then the addition. And then the addition in the jail is 150, 160 to do to, and again, this is to um, closer, to 200. closer to 200 to clean up the exterior of the buildings. And so my recommendation would be we take two weeks so the to the next work session so that the commissioners can review this in detail and look at it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can revisit it in two weeks. And maybe by then I'll have my laptop working. Maybe <laughs> working with that. Well, maybe we can discuss it then, because I think that um, I think that there needs to be more time to review it on the commissioner's side. Okay. Yeah, before you you see some of us in various areas of concern. Cool. Okay. That sounds great. That's good. Well, I mean, it's an old building, so I mean, yes. It's gonna take money to set back up, and I think. Jeff, you have had some ideas on funding, right? And well, it, so the um, the this kind of this larger price tag makes sense um, in the grand scheme of things, especially with inflation and construction costs. Oh, yes. um, the 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 work that's incorporated into these, um, you know, is needed. Um, the question is, is, is how and when uh, it's done. So, um, like with Historic Museum Commission, we could hypothetically get, you know, like 150000 out of that taken out. Um, there are other foundations that are associated with historic buildings that we could go after. The challenge that we always have is, is being a municipal government, you know, is trying to figure out ways to fundraise that. Gotcha. Um, you know, it's hard to say how it's all going to shake out, but I think that, you know, between now and then having everybody, um, you know, take a deep dive and look at it and read through it and then maybe revisit it and have a discussion in a couple weeks okay. um, would be a good thing, just because it's a lot, there's a lot in there. So, See, there's a lot in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot to be done. It looks like it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 we, when we did the first renovation, um, we we handled all of the really major things, which was the roof and uh, the items that were would um, cause problems with the rest of the constitution of the building. So we took care of those in that stretch, and uh, since then, obviously, with the rest of the paint, like the, the windows, the exterior elements, the building have continued to deteriorate. Um, windows especially and um, we're at a point now where we really don't have any more time to wait to address them and so this this is uh, you know um, well, Larson's best guess at, at how we would do that and what the cost would be so um, are there any specific types of contractors that we would need to hire because it is a historical building? Well, this is one of the things that generally comes up when we even discuss this is um, people in the community will call and say, um, you should hire local, like you should have local people do this. And um, I'm not saying that local people explicitly can't do it, but the, the, because of the nature of the building, you have to have somebody that has experience with historic uh, structures uh, because there's a lot of fabrication that has to go on with some of the elements of it. And you can't, it can't just be, um, a local, like necessarily a local contractor that would be capable of handling it. Um, especially when you get up high up and you're using the lift and, uh, um, you know, dealing with a lot of this stuff. So generally we'll have, the, we'll have Larson, we would have Larson put together bid specs that would sure. be very specific and then we would end up hopefully with a, a contractor like uh, Dependable 
or durable uh, restoration company like we had out of Maryland um, who did an exceptional job on renovating the top end of the building. So um, they, they're usually better at getting done on time. They usually do a better job, but then um, they were actually under budget, I believe, when they got done. So, um, And then I don't see anything here as it relates to the agenda for Wednesday. Um, we don't have any, any correspondence. Yes, thank you very much. Look at that. This is based upon the page on the we talked about the last time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.